In today's episode, I'm going to take a look at the Elegoo Neptune 2. This is an Ender 3 clone, $169. It's really a hot printer right now. It's hard to get your hands on because they sell out quick. And I'm really surprised how well it prints. But it's got some features over the Ender 3 that I really like. And there's some features that I don't. So let's take a look at this on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also brought to you by PCBWay.com, a great place to get low-cost circuit boards and also low-cost assembly services, all from one place, PCBWay.com. First off, I didn't get this from Elegoo. They didn't offer me one. I went to Amazon and bought this. I had to wait till it was in stock, and then I bought it. So thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped make this possible. This printer comes as a kit, very similar to Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. It'll take you about an hour to put this together. It comes with a hot end, which is identical to the Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. The PTFE tube goes all the way down to the nozzle, so you've got the same issues that that creates. It's got a plastic extruder top, but it doesn't have the metal insert in the arm. But it's probably going to crack the same way the Ender 3 Ender 3 Pro do, so at some point you'll probably want to put a metal extruder top on this. It does have a metal frame. It's all aluminum extrusion, but it's smooth on one side. That's similar to like the CR6 from Creality. So that's kind of nice. It makes it nice looking and you don't have to worry about junk falling into the grooves down here, but it can make it a little more difficult to install like a side mount for a spool holder. So I kind of wish it had that. But other than that, it's very, very similar to an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro. Even the power supply, it isn't a mean well, it is a base power supply. Now if you'll notice, this is a flat table, but this thing rocks. So I have to take this all apart and reposition it, but I actually printed with it like this out of the box, I just shimmed it up, but it seems like that's pretty common with this machine. It does have a different way to tighten the belt over here, it's two screws and you pull this, but it's not really a adjuster. It does have the wide rail on the bottom, similar to Ender 3 Pro, but where it differs is it's got a touchscreen display, it's got a different circuit board, and it's got a filament runout sensor. In addition to that, the circuit board itself is 32-bit, and it has silent drivers on both the X and the Y stepper. The Z stepper doesn't have it, so that still makes noise but it does have it on X and Y, and that's similar to an Ender 3 Max. You have to manually level the bed. There is no auto bed level. In fact, it doesn't even have a mounting screws to put a BL touch on it. But what's nice is the firmware that's part of the LCD, you can actually pick a position to move the head over the adjustment knobs. So you don't have to wait for it to move to different ones like my G-Code does. You can actually hit a button, it'll move to whichever spot you want. Take the piece of paper, slide it under, adjust the knob. So I was able to level this bed pretty quickly, and then I did a live adjust when I printed a chep cube, which was my first print. And I was amazed how quickly that worked. There was no warpage, there was no uh, sagging, anything like you typically find with an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. This thing is like perfectly flat. In fact, I printed all these little components on this bed and not a single failure. That's pretty amazing. These pieces are from the stempfee.org rubber band card that you can 3D print and build. It's great for kids. The print quality of these parts on both sides came out really nice, so I decided to put this little kit together. Everything fit together nicely. I didn't have to file anything or carve anything. This is the first time, because I've printed this before, this is the first time I've been able to assemble it right off the bed on a first print. So that's pretty impressive. And the car? It works. So it obviously prints pretty good. So what don't I like about it? Well that's the circuit board and the display. I can't find replacements anywhere and I really like to have replacement parts available for my printers. That's what I love about Ender 3, all the Creality machines and even the Voxel Lab Aquila. They all use very similar parts. The circuit boards mount the same and everything else. This has its own circuit board and its own display and I can't figure out where to get replacements. Now I did go to Elegoo's site. I did find, not under support, they've got nothing for this under support, but under their download page, they did have some information on the circuit board. Schematics and board layout and that. So that's nice. Hopefully they eventually offer the board for sale. At least I haven't been able to find it. 
They did have some firmware there you could download. It didn't have the source. It was just a dot bin. I don't, and there's two of them. So I don't know if the display takes one and the board takes the other. I got to dig deeper into that. But it's just not as clean. So I would hope Elegoo updates that a little bit and then also makes these parts available. Because if you're going to copy an open source design like Ender 3, then open source everything, you know, so we can see everything. It looks like they're working towards that, but they're not there yet. So that, that bothers me. But I wish they would have just copied the same circuit board layout. That would have been really nice. And speaking of circuit boards, PCBWay.com is a great place to get low-cost circuit boards, but you can also get assembly services. You can supply them the parts or give them a bill of material with the parts list. They will track down the parts, solder things together, review it with you during the process, and at the end ship you completely assembled boards. So if you're looking for a manufacturing partner for your electronics designs, check out PCBWay.com. So $169 for this machine, it's pretty good with a touch screen and a filament runout sensor. Now you can get an Ender 3 for $155, even cheaper. And you can get a touch screen for it, you can get a filament runout for it. You can get a better board because the Ender 3 doesn't have the silent driver, so it's a little bit noisy. But out of the box, $155, you can be printing and then upgrade it however you want. This is already upgraded out of the box, so for $169 and prints really nice. And then there's the Voxelab Aquila, which I showed in a previous video. This is a clone of the Ender 3 V2, which is like a $250 to $270 printer, depending on where you buy it. This one copied that, but it's $169 to $179, about the same as this. And you get adjusters, you get glass bed, you get silent drivers on all three axes, not just two like this one. You get a, it's not a touch screen, but you get a larger display, power supply built into the base. I covered all this, but these are two great choices, and then of course you have under three for 155. Man, for under 180 dollars, we've got some great choices for printers that print really well. And this Elegoo is definitely an addition to this lineup. If they can fix these these parts issues, I'll be more positive towards it. But overall, I like the print quality. I don't know. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.